The LG G1 is LG's flagship OLED TV for 2021, but with the existence of the C1, is it really worth spending more money for its unique gallery design and advertised Evo panel? That's what we're going to find out. Hi, I'm Ryan, a lead tester at Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. As you can see, we're in a new room setup, so let us know in the comments below what you think about it. To compare the G1 to the C1, we'll go over the overall design and smart features, then we'll do a quick overview before diving deep into the test results. We won't touch on everything because these two TVs are extremely similar. If you want more details, you can take a look at our C1 review video. For the G1, we bought and tested the 65-inch model, but it's available in a 55 and 77-inch as well. For the C1, we tested the 55-inch, and it's available in various sizes from 48 to 83 inches. We expect the various sizes to perform similarly. One of the first things you'll notice is that the two TVs have very different designs. The G1 is part of LG's gallery series. It doesn't come with a stand and is meant to be wall-mounted, whereas the C1 just comes with its center-mounted stand. The G1 is much thinner, and it includes a slim wall mount so that the TV sits flush against the wall when mounted. If you want to set up the TV on a stand, then you have to buy the stand separately. The one that we installed on our unit is the one that we bought for the G10 from last year. The backs are also very different. As you can see, the G1 has an extra part at the top for the wall mount. It normally comes with a cover to hide the inputs, but we didn't receive one with our unit. There's a small hook here so that you can pass all the cables down the middle like so. Cable management is the same on the C1. You just pass the cables through the stand. The build quality feels better on the G1, but they're both very well built. You shouldn't have any issues with either one. In terms of smart features, they both run on webOS, so the overall experience is virtually identical. They also have the same remote with the same functions. Before we dive deep into our test results, let's quickly go over the overall performance of the two TVs. Basically, the G1 is the higher end model. It performs very much like the C1, but it has a slightly wider color gamut and gets brighter in HDR. Like all OLEDs, they're both fantastic for watching movies and HDR content in a dark room because of their near-infinite contrast ratio, so you get those really inky blacks. However, they're not the best options for very bright settings because of the automatic brightness limiter. Motion handling is virtually identical on both TVs, so they're excellent for fast-moving content like sports and gaming, and you also get a 120Hz refresh rate and HDMI 2.1 support. For use as a PC monitor, as usual, LG OLED TVs are outstanding when it comes to input lag and supported resolutions, but you have to consider the risk of permanent burn-in. With our quick overview out of the way, let's dive into the details. Just like any other OLED, the G1 and C1 have a near-infinite contrast ratio. This means you get perfect blacks because the pixels turn off completely. And because there's no backlight or local dimming, you don't get any weird blooming or visible transitions between dimming zones, which you typically see on full array local dimming backlit TVs. These are the best TVs you can get for dark rooms. For a room with a lot of ambient light, it depends. They both have outstanding reflection handling, but you can see in these photos that you might still see a little reflection if there's a bright light source directly opposite the TV. As for the screen brightness, they perform similarly. They should be bright enough for most settings, but the bigger issue is the automatic brightness limiter. What this does is that it reduces the overall brightness as more of the screen lights up. So, depending on the content and the amount of ambient light, you might have a hard time seeing the image. In HDR, you can see that the G1 gets a lot brighter. The G1 is using LG's EVO panel, which promises up to a 20% increase in brightness compared to the traditional OLED panels. Just a side note here, some users have confirmed that their C1 has the EVO panel, but ours doesn't. The results might be different for those with an EVO panel, but as for ours, the G1 is roughly 100 nits brighter than our non-EVO C1 in most scenes. Unfortunately, there's a significant drop in brightness when going into game mode on the G1. It brings the brightness down to about the same level as the C1, around 600 nits in real scenes, but smaller highlights are a bit brighter. The viewing angles are excellent on both, as expected for OLEDs. 
This means that the image remains accurate if you watch from the side. The G1 is slightly better when it comes to the color gamut and color volume, but the difference is pretty small. They both have full or near full DCI-P3 coverage, the color space used in most HDR content, and their color volumes are both decent. What all this means is that you'll get a very true to life image. The G1's out of the box color accuracy is great, much better than the C1, but that varies between units. The G1's gradient handling is not as good as the C1, but close. You can see some banding in the grays and greens on both. Gray uniformity is excellent on both TVs. The only thing you might notice is that there are faint vertical lines in dark scenes. That's pretty normal for OLEDs, but they're not visible unless you really look for them. As for black uniformity, they're perfect because OLEDs can turn off the pixels completely. For inputs, you get four HDMI 2.1 ports on both TVs, which is much better than the two that you usually see on other brands. There's no more composite input on either TV, so you'll need an HDMI adapter for your older devices. They both support eARC on HDMI 2. If you plan on gaming or to use the TV as a monitor, the input lag is extremely low on both TVs, almost on par with desktop monitors. They have a prevent input delay feature, which shaves off a few milliseconds of latency at 60 Hz. As for supported resolutions, it's superb as always. They support the same resolutions, like 1080p and 1440p at 60 and 120 Hz, although you have to force a custom resolution for 1440p at 60 Hz. By the way, we didn't really talk about motion handling, and that's because everything is pretty much the same. Both TVs have a 120Hz refresh rate and a near instantaneous response time. They also have the same features, like black frame insertion, motion interpolation, and VRR support. When it comes to console compatibility, the G1 has the same issue as the C1. Dolby Vision doesn't work when FreeSync is on, but it does when it's HDMI Forum VRR or G-Sync. LG recently pushed out a firmware update that allows for gaming at 120Hz in Dolby Vision. Most people should have received the update by now. There's one last thing to talk about before we move on to the sound quality, and that's the unavoidable subject of permanent burn-in. Just like any other OLEDs, there's the risk of burn-in on the G1 and C1. We don't expect it to be a problem for most people, but if you plan on using it as a PC monitor or like to leave the TV on the same news channel all day, then this is something you have to consider. Alright, last but not least, the sound quality of the built-in speakers. They're actually quite good on the G1, better than the C1. The G1 has more bass extension and gets louder. Of course, you still won't get that really deep rumbling sound unless you get a soundbar or a home theater system with a dedicated subwoofer. So overall, what's our verdict on the G1? Is it the best OLED of 2021 and is it worth getting over the C1? The answer is yes and no. It's arguably the best and most feature rich OLED TV in 2021, but it's not worth the price over the C1. The slightly wider color gamut and higher screen brightness are likely not noticeable except for the most hardcore display enthusiasts. And other than the slim wall mount, the G1 doesn't bring any new feature that isn't on the C1. So that's it. You can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.